Amidst a snowstorm of love opens with Lin Yang, the male lead, making his way in the snowing storm to meet his friend at Red Fish, a trendy bar. He walked past a group of Chinese tourists just arriving in town and being recognized by one of them. Lin replied you got the wrong person. I have a feeling this person is important and might show up again later. Lin walks towards Red Fish and sees Ingua, the female lead, talking on her phone and doodling on the window. Is it love at first sight? I don't know about you but I find it difficult to fall in love with something through a frosted window. Lin meets his friend Wu Wei at the bar and got introduced to Meng Xiao Tian, Ingua's younger brother by three hours. Lin also noticed a billiard case among the suitcases. Ingua decided to take a quick nap while waiting for her friend to find them a hotel. She wakes up finding Lin and a glass of cocktail. Her brother explained to her how he befriended them while she was away on the phone. Lin called a car service and told Wu he can wait for the siblings and drop them off at the hotel. Cars are difficult to book at a night like this. Ingua, being cautious, struck up a conversation with Lin, trying to decide if he can be trusted. Lin explained I'm a foreign student and proceeded to show her his IDs to put her mind at ease. Ingua's friend found them a hotel and they got into a car with Lin, not before she takes a picture of the license plate, to be extra cautious. Do you think she's being overly cautious? I'm all for being careful, but I find this part to be excessive, especially when she saw all of his IDs. Ingua and her brother arrived at the hotel and bid goodbye to Lin, not before she thanked him again. Meng Xiaotian rushes forward and exchanged information with Lin on WeChat, so they can meet up later for lunch or dinner. Ingua watches as Lin drives away in the snow. Do you guys think she already took a liking to him here? Lin shows up at a noodle shop, asked to spend the night because he can't get into his apartment. He hardly slept the past two days because he was finishing up his thesis. Next day the noodle soup owner made Lin a bowl of noodle and thanked him for loaning him the money. He showed Lin that he repaid the loan in full. So Lin is not a poor student but has plenty of money? The director is planning the seat here for something big later. Lin is waiting for his train at the train station while chatting with Ying Guo. Ying Guo wants to treat Lin to dinner, as a way of thanking him for helping them out. Lin explained he's already on a train returning back to school. Ying Guo was disappointed. Lin, in the meantime, found out Ying Guo is a professional snooker player. Ying Guo and her brother Xiao Tian decided to catch a train and meet Lin at his school. Wu Wei, Lin's friend and roommate, tracked him down on the train and convinced him to return to Helsinki because the daughter of his mentors is visiting. Ying Guo and her brother ended up missing Lin and Wu Wei at the train station because they decided to have a quick meal at the hamburger joint that Lin recommended. Wu Wei also wanted to stop for hamburger but was persuaded by Lin to wait. Xiao Tian didn't find out until later that Lin has returned to Helsinki because something came up. Okay, who follows someone back to school just to say thank you and take them out for a meal? Is it believable? And missing each other because of a hamburger joint at a Finland train station? Really? Lin felt bad and asked his friend to treat Ying Guo and Xiao Tian to a nice meal and show them around. In exchange, he will sub for him, just this once. Sub for what? I'm sure we will find out later, soon I hope. Lin and Wu Wei had a nice dinner with the mentor's daughter. Before seeing her off. Lin got a call from his friend that Ying Guo and Xiao Tian didn't want to eat. Lin tells his friend to show them around school and be a good host. Ying Guo texted Li to thank him for asking his friend to show them around. Fast forward to a week later, Xiao Tian complaining to his